saw stakes and the paint marks uh, but nobody really knew all the giant footers that were under there again the rumors are out there but nobody really saw that stuff um, this was kind of there you can see the uh, uh, unicular I think they call it going up the first hill what they're actually doing if you guys can come in a little closer son I have to yell so much I'm sorry Every morning to open Millennium Force, what we need to do, it's been built in a extra safety feature in the ride. What we need, what they're doing now, they're going up to the top of the lift hill and they're inspecting the cable. They're looking at that cable for any phrase, anything out of the ordinary. What they'll do is they'll get to the top, they'll climb out, walk across the top of the hill, down the other side to where there's a switch. Every day they need to turn that switch on in order to operate the ride. It's a built-in safety feature that Intamin put into the coaster to ensure that we look at that cable every single day that we want to run that ride. Wow. Wow. <clears throat> Did they turn it off at night then? Okay, we're good. Yeah, when they shut down the system, it automatically turns that switch off. We're back in 2000. A lot of people got the ride man. Port the foot, port the first foot, this is 99. After the end of the 2000 season, we started pouring all the rest of the And we had it done by opening deck. It's a massive undertaking. Um, there you can see the guy up there at the top. I think that's Michael Burks. I think that's <laughs> We were looking for a volunteer this morning. You can see, again, remember, who the hell is he? Yeah, you can see it now, he's looking up his harness. But yeah, you imagine how windy it is down here. Yeah. Think about how windy it is up there. How much do you pay him? <laughs> yeah. How much? Yeah, we were looking for volunteers this morning to go up there, but uh, Mike Cohen's the only one that volunteered. <laughs> 
people on the bridge at once. Go ahead. So is, is he working on the switch now? He's bending over. You know? he's, at the very end, he's at the very end of the step. Yep. That's where he's at then. Okay. Wow. Now that's obviously wow. not all of the cable that he gets to see. Right, that's the length of the main cable. Because uh, it's on that uh, catch bar that goes up and down. <coughs> yeah, the rest of that small cable. Yeah, let me let's come down this way, see if there's something else I can get out.
such a massive structure, the track, the supports, uh, impossible to paint uh, during the off season. So what we have to do is right after we close, and then obviously we can't paint during the winter, and then right before we open in April and May, if the weather's good, uh, we're going through this painting process. Um, we've already done a majority of the work along the first hill, and after the track uh, comes over the, comes off the island and heads back towards the exit. Uh, I'm not sure the plan of this island is second year or third year, uh, but we are going through a three year repainting process. Um, <clears throat> just wear and tear. It's obviously outside all summer. We try and get long lasting paint. As you can see, it starts, you know, it starts to weather. Um, one of the unique things that you'll see if you look at some of the structures, like this one over here, it almost looks like half of it's already been either sanded or painted, but actually all it is is the winter. The winds coming across the lake, especially over at that first hill, there's nothing that stops the snow, sleet, rain, wind, elements during the winter. And this whole side of the park just gets blasted all winter long. So that's kind of why we did that section first, because it needed it the most. But again, you can see around some of the support structures where it's almost a, a line where half of the coaster looks, again, less bad than the other half, if that makes sense. But again, we are going through a three-year painting process, so we hope to have it done, obviously, by 2013. Uh, somebody asked, did you ask, what was the question you had? Oh, how long is paint? Well, obviously, this is the first time we've done it since 2000, so roughly 10 years. Yes, the dinosaurs. Uh, yes, we are bringing uh, dinosaurs uh, to the park next summer. I know this isn't the right crowd to tell that to. It's not a roller coaster. Uh, but I have two boys, uh, five and three at home, that can't wait. Um, again, it's a family attraction, 100%. Um, but something neat and unique. They brought it to Kings Island last year, or this year, and it was a huge success. Uh, a huge success. Um, so we are bringing the dinosaurs here. You can see some of the stakes in the ground. Um, we're just now going through the process of budget for that. Uh, how much money, you know, uh, we, we are working within about a million dollar budget and we want to put on the best exhibit we can. It is an extra charge. Uh, so for those of you that don't want to go see it, you're not going to see that price in your ticket. Uh, for those that do, it is an extra $5. Um, but, you know, we looked at, uh, especially Kings Island did a lot of research on it. And, you know, right now they've got a very smaller version of it up at the Detroit Science Center. It's 20 bucks if you want to go see about seven or eight dinosaurs inside. Uh, we're doing five bucks to see 50 of them outside. Uh, but again, we try and add something for everybody. Yes, everyone, especially this group, would love a roller coaster. My kids care less about Windseeker, thank God. Uh, <laughs> coasters, they could care less about. They like the other stuff. You know, so again, we try and offer something for everybody. Uh, we did take out uh, paddle wheel excursions. And again, it was one of those rides that a lot of people liked. I loved it. Uh, it didn't go too fast. It didn't go too high off the ground. Perfect ride for me. Um, but again, the longer it's here, the more maintenance costs are. You know, we can't run to Home Depot or Lowe's and buy replacement parts for those boats. Um, so as a ride gets older and older, the cost to upkeep that goes higher and higher, and we traditionally see ridership going lower and lower. Uh, the best example I use is back in 93 when we took out uh, Mill Race. That was a great ride. We replaced it with Raptor. Anyone here want to see Mill Race back instead of Raptor? <laughs> Um, again, uh, in its last year, we maybe did 200,000 rides on, on the boat. Again, we're a major ride, we'll do over a million. You know, so again, as that ridership goes lower and lower, um, we look to replace it with something that more people will enjoy, and we easily expect more than 200,000 people to enjoy the dinosaurs and stuff. Um, yes? It'll be loud. Sorry. I'm not 
sure how it's going to affect Terra Island yet. Um, they're just now literally putting out the plants. You can see the stakes in the ground, which are just rough stakes from the uh, dinosaurs on the Earth, I believe it is the name of the company, from China, I believe. Uh, they came out and just did a rough stake out, but yeah, I'm not sure how it's going to affect Terra Island, if at all. Uh, but back real quick to Paddle Wheel, the reason we had to close it, obviously we had to get people over to this island. We're going to use probably that same entrance that you use for Terra Island, but obviously it's got to be more of a permanent structure, and it also has to be ADA compliant. So it was, it was again, strictly a cost issue uh, to do a ramp to get over to the island. It would have taken you 10 minutes to navigate the ramp to be able to get over on the island, and then another 10 to get actually down off the ramp. Um, again, to keep a bridge, to be able to keep the boat ride open. It just wasn't fis fiscally responsible. Again, the ridership had gone down, and unfortunately, you know, we do have to take rides out. It, it's, it's unfortunate, um, but again, the other example I always use with my wife is, we're always bummed when a restaurant closes in the town. Damon's just closed a couple days ago. We're always bummed at that, that, oh, that was a great restaurant. Oh, when's the last time you went? 10 years ago, you know. And if you don't ride, you know. We don't take out popular rides, you know. Uh, so again, it is unfortunate. It was a great ride. I loved it. Uh, it was fun. I love the corny jokes. Again, it's that, that's got, that boat ride's got Marty Moltz written all over it. I mean, it's great stuff. So, uh, but again, we're very excited about dinosaurs. Again, I know, I know at least two boys in my house that can't wait for that exhibit to open. Brian, now you say it's an extra five dollars on your ticket, but what, what do you do if you're a pass holder? What do you buy your ticket for? Uh, not sure yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, they haven't figured that out, or I haven't heard that part yet. We're still such in the infancy of this. Those questions we haven't answered yet. Okay. Let me see. Go ahead. Out of all your coasters, which is the most expensive? Great question. Out of all of our coasters, the most expensive one to maintain, Mean Street. Uh, again, it's closed now for the end of the season for retracking. Every year, we have to go through and replace a section of that coaster. Every single year. Um, so while a wood coaster is cheaper to put up, the life, you know, over the life of that coaster is so much more expensive than steel. We put this up, we're done with it until we tear it down. You oh, know, oh. yes, there's maintenance issues. All coasters have maintenance issues. They tear it down. Um, but a wooden <laughs> coaster, Blue Street, Gemini, uh, Mine Ride, but especially Mean Street just because it's so massive, uh, we constantly have to be basically rebuilding that ride. <laughs> and if no other questions, we'll start kind of, well, yeah, we'll start trailing back towards the hill. It's about quarter till. Yep. We're going to remodel Blue Street. Not that I know of. I haven't heard of any plans like that. Uh, we do, just like the other wood coasters, we replace sections, but I haven't heard of any major renovations to that ride. Mine actually just a few weeks ago was named the number one steel coaster in the world once again by me today. So we're very proud of that. It cost $25 million to build and it opened in 2000. <laughs> <laughs> It's still quite old, apparently Skyrim is a six Yes, Skyrim is a but for my opinion, Yeah, because there's, I think there's, there's fins that are on the skin that sit out on the trains. And as you guys can see, if you look over here on the brake run, these are, uh, magnetic brakes so there's spins on the side of the trains that stick out you come right through the magnetic brakes and that's what brings you to a stop so quickly i just didn't want to say magnetic and someone right there there's friction brakes you know, and i look like an idiot don't worry if you're wrong the hall is <laughs> <laughs>
Well, it's going to be Is that what's grabbing the yes. brakes? Yes. That is what. Here, just one second. Okay, Brian. Okay, Brian. Yeah. Okay, Brian. Okay, just stop at the base of the lift. cars off the midway by quarter till. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to make a quick adjustment. We're going to focus on the part of the tour that you guys really want to see. We're not going to go down to the overbank. We're going to stay to the left of this lift hill and get you guys down there for some great pictures. So just a slight adjustment so we can speed it up for time constraints. This right here is the storage track that they use. Um, every night the trains get taken off of the main track and shifted over onto the storage track so that maybe can do their instruction and they can easily get underneath the trains and take a look at everything. <laughs> if you look at the yellow train here, we have water dummies. Um, there's lots of different uses for these. The main thing we use them for in the regular season is if the temperature and the wind speeds are such in the morning that we feel that the trains might valley, in other words, not clear a hill, we will go ahead and put water dummies in the train to add weight while we're testing. So the Rhymos have different um, different requirements that if they see the wind speeds above a certain a certain number, they have to be required by park operations to use the water test dummies. Because as you can imagine, if if we have a train valley, that's very time consuming to get it winched over the next hill, and it, it, obviously our guests wouldn't be happy if the ride couldn't open. This section of track right here is the piece that actually moves back and forth and that's what allows the trains to move between the regular station track and the storage track. Okay. Um, uh, this is my fourth year here. Fourth year. Yep. And in my company, I can hit the 35 years. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> As you guys can see, um, uh, this is, uh, I believe it's called a tensioner or something of that nature. I'm not an engineering person, so I can't give you the exact terminology. But this is part of our cable elevator lift system that we use on the ride. This is the first cable elevator lift system to ever be used on a roller coaster. I'm not actually sure how many actually use this. Does anybody know? How many? I, I, don't, I don't know. There's not very many that use a cable system. Um, the reason we chose to go with the cable elevator lift is uh, Intimate came up with this solution because we wanted to be 300 feet, but we don't have For the, uh, we just have the space to do an additional lift because if you look at Magnum, the incline is not nearly as steep. And if we were to do a chain, we would need two chains to space this steep ascent. This is about a 45 degree lift and we use that cable and so it's able we're able to get up to that height much much quicker. And the drive system for this is actually right down at the other end. Just as a, as a fun fact in the morning uh, when they're doing their inspections if you look on that right hand side of the lift there's actually a maintenance cart, a little maintenance elevator they take and ride we up saw him going up. the track. We saw, him going, we saw him going up when we were at the Oh, okay. Outside. You guys actually saw that already? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> From a distance. And it, it, another fun fact, you guys, most of you guys probably noticed, at night, the ride, the support structure actually has uh, a lighting show on it that changes colors and everything. And you can see all those lights positioned down here that project up onto the towers. The way that this, uh, that this elevator lift system works, as you can see down there, the cable goes up the center of the lift hill and goes all the way up to the top, and it's got a really long sled attached to it that it, that fixes onto the bottom of the train when it picks, picks you up at the uh, station. That sled takes you all the way up, and then about halfway down the drop, the sled stops and the cable continues down vertically, and it continues its path it right here. The cable goes all the way down to the drive system and all the way back down here. 
down to those uh, tipping points. And then it goes ahead and makes the trip right back up to left. Right, right. Well, I'm not sure the way the cable is. Um, they, they inspect it every day for, for wear and everything. Um, I mean, they have to replace it regularly. minutes and take pictures. Um, if you guys look over at this section of track, if you look to the right hand side where the where it goes into the tunnel, you can see that we're working on this paint job. If you look to the left hand side, it's full. So the deal is with these paint jobs that arrive this big is it usually takes up a little bit of it's not painted yet. Everything out by the midway, it's all painted. This will all get finished this next off season. The patch could clear that. And even if, I mean, this board has a lot of extra clearance on it, but you know, it's, uh, that's an example of why we would do that. And I still hit that hole. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh my God. Four years ago, I was going to go Oh wow. So, all right, if you guys have got pictures, we're going to go ahead and start migrating back this other direction here. <laughs> 